Hi kids. Okay, this is lesson 11 for Eureka Math and the objective is multiply a decimal fraction by single digit whole numbers and then relate to a written method using the area model and place value understanding and then explain the reasoning used. So it's a whole bunch of stuff that is still using the place value chart. We're going to talk about um, the words copy or like making copies of something. We're not talking about making copies, IBM, no, that's, but it's similar because you're repeating a number. So repeated addition is going to be happening a lot. So these are the notes that we will have taken already uh, by the time you get to your book. Okay, so we're going to be talking all about how to um, show all these uh, operations and what the words mean and the copies and what it looks like and the algorithm and it just means a fancy word for saying that's the way we do it that's the procedure it's all about repeated addition and then a little bit more here and again you can pause the video hopefully it'll focus 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 there it is um, you can pause the video to make sure you're, you're getting all the notes. And again, two copies of this amount, 43 hundredths, and then what that looks like, 43 and 43, and then how you get this in standard form, and then the standard algorithm. We're gonna eventually move to that. Okay, and then here's the last one. Uh, four copies of 423 thousandths, 423. So similar to yesterday, but we're just doing repeating of that same number. So remember, pause the video if you need to, and then let's get into the problem set so I can kind of help you along with it. Solve by drawing discs on a place value chart. And so we're going to make like little mini charts all over the place. You also have to write an equation and express the product in standard form. So always underline what you have to do. You have to draw disks, you have to write an equation, you have to write in standard form. So if I have three copies of two tenths, I'm just gonna make my little chart right here. Ones, tenths, as I have been. I'm not gonna have any other unnecessary place value positions, just because I wanna keep it simple. And I have two tenths, one, two, and I have this three copies. One, two, that's two copies. One, two, that's three copies. So in the standard algorithm, we're going to be taking this two tenths and then multiplying it three times. And so in single digit multiplication, which you are familiar with, two times three is six. So what do we do with the decimal? Well, we're going to be talking a lot about that in class. There's one position here. This is the tenths. And so when I have two uh, tenths three times, I end up with six tenths. And so you can just put the decimal right here. And it's not going to be about lining it up. We'll talk more about that in the future. If you want to show repeated addition, then you would line up the decimals like we have been and you would get your six tenths that way too. But this is our standard form answer. You just need the one. We won't be doing it two times every time. I'm just showing you for the first one. So five groups of two hundredths. Now this time I don't really need the, um, I don't need anything else, but I am gonna write the ones place because I want to have a zero there and then I'm going to have the tenths and the hundredths. Okay, remember we can always switch to fraction form if it gets too cumbersome. Put your decimal down between ones and tenths. Now I have five groups of two hundredths. So if I have two hundredths and I have this five times, it's just another way of saying I have these copies. I'm repeating it. So this is the second, two, three, four, five. I have two hundredths five times. So um, in your notes, we're also going to have gone over this regrouping, which is just like the last couple of days. You can't have more than nine digits in any, or zero through nine as a digit in any one column. Once you have the 10 or a double digit, you have to regroup. So what does that look like? Well, it looks like if I have 10, then 
I'm going to end up with regrouping and then bumping it over and saying this, all this, is now one of the greater place value position. And this one has zero. So we already moved it all over. Now let's see that in the standard algorithm. We have two hundredths. And we're going to multiply that five times. And five times two is ten. And five times zero is zero plus one is one. And so this is what it looks like as we're doing this in the standard algorithm. So I have 10 hundredths, 10 hundredths in that place value position, zero ones. So I have zero. Now I have one in the tenths position. And that is the culmination of all these 10, but it's really one here, zero here. See, one in the tenths and zero in the hundredths. So that's kind of how that's going to shake out. Um, I'll buzz you through a few of these real quickly. Three times six tenths, and we have ones and tenths. Make your little chart, put your decimal in. And then um, six tenths, one, two, three, four, five, six. And remember, we were talking about keeping them in a way that you can easily count. So five and one make six. Two, three, four, five, and one. Okay, so I have three times six tenths. That's a lot of tenths. So if I have three, let's do this one horizontally, times six tenths. What's my total number of tenths? If you're using your standard form, you can write 18 tenths. If you use unit form, six tenths, three times you would get 18 tenths. And so it's all going to be kind of coming together with the unit form and the standard form and just kind of, well, what do I end up with? I'm going to eventually have 1, 1, and 8 tenths left over. So if we add them all up, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, move these over. Now these aren't here anymore. They equate 1, that's 10 times the value over here. Then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's the 8. So that's what this all means, OK? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through so that it's faster. This book page that is already completed <coughs> so that you guys won't have to watch the video for so long. And I'm just going to talk through it. So if I have six times four hundredths, I have four hundredths, one, two, three, four, five, six times, okay? It doesn't matter the order you put it in. We're gonna be multiplying six times four, which is 24. If I have hundredths, then when I multiply it, if you do it in unit form, you're gonna see the answer is the same. It's gonna be 24 hundredths. So as you regroup, you count up 10, and that makes one of the higher. Count up another 10. That makes one of the higher place value position. Then what's left? That's the four in the hundredths place. So I hope this is making sense for you. In On problem E, same thing. If I have seven tenths five times, I'm creating a whole bunch of tenths. I'm creating 35 tenths. Well, I can't possibly fit them all in this column. So every time I have a group of 10, I bundle it up and put one in the higher place value position. So 10 of these equal one of those, and take them out. 10 of these equal one of those. So that you have 35 tenths. Four thousandths times three. Here's four and four and four. That's three times. So add up to 10, rebundle it, have one of these hundredths. Okay, because this is the place value position that is adjacent and it has the value 10 times greater. So this is what it looks like in standard form. Four thousandths times three, it equals 12 thousandths. Remember the two ends up in the thousandths place and you can have a zero here. And sometimes I just don't finish that off, but that's what it would look like in the book. So uh, moving on to number two, then we have 
the uniform and they have these little blocks in these models and yes you are going to see these for a little bit so it says draw a model similar to the one pictured below for parts b c and d find the sum of the partial products to evaluate each expression so this is just breaking down each um, place value position now this first number has to go on the side it has to go on the outside I'll, we'll talk about it because every now and then we'll have a little shift, but you have to make sure you change the top. So for now, just understand that it's going to be three ones. This is a unit form. Okay, so unit on the top. Three ones and one tenth and two hundredths. So pretty soon you're going to be filling that in. Then you just do this one multiplication position, seven times three. And so it's seven times three ones. It's 21 ones, okay? Then seven times one tenth. So we're doing just one place value position at a time. At the bottom, you're gonna be filling it all in in standard form. Unit form, standard form. And then you're going to take it and write everything in standard form vertically so that you can prove that you haven't misaligned anything. We're going to put it all together and then you'll end up with uh, your final answer. Okay. So same thing with this one. You start with the six on the side. And we're going to take six and multiply it by each digit. First in unit form. Okay, and then you don't have to rewrite the whole equation. You can just write what it equals because it's right here. And put the unit form, unit form, standard form. Then add them up and look at how careful you have to be about your place value positions. It's 24 ones, that ends up over here. Two tens, four ones. 12 tenths, 1.2. 30 hundredths, 0 0.30. Line everything up carefully so that you will get the correct answer. And this one isn't even finished, and there you go. Okay. Now, on the back side, I'm going to talk you through the back real quick. Because we're already at 12 minutes. Just keep an eye on the time. So, same thing, but this time you have, like, zero scaffolding. Make your own box. 4.65 has to be written on the top, 4, 1, 6 tenths, 5 hundredths. 3 is on the outside. Multiply each place value position. 3 times 6 is 18, so that's 18 tenths. 3 times 5 is going to be 15, but that's hundredths. What does each one look like in standard form? 12, 1.8, 0 0.15 line them up carefully so that you'll get the correct standard form answer. For the last one, you have more place value positions. They always like to throw a doozy in at the end. Okay, and so again, you just take it apart, make it simple. You don't have to put anything here. I'm just illustrating it so that you will know there are zero ones and there are zero tenths because it's four times zero or zero times four will give you zero. And why bother, right? Just waste your time and your lead. So add them up carefully and uh, show your regrouping and have your final answer circled. Be careful when you line things up. Use the decimal at, as your anchor because that's what we've been talking about the last couple days. Adding and subtracting requires the lining up of that decimal. For the last two word problems, here we have Miles incorrectly gave the product of seven times 2.6 or two and six tenths has 14 and 42 hundredths. Use a place value chart or an area model to help Miles understand his mistakes. So if we use this area model and you set it up with the two and six tenths labeling unit form, then you should see that the 14 ones looks like this, remember the decimals over here, and the 42 tenths ends in the tenths place, not the hundredths place. And then when you line them up, you can see that he just called it the wrong name or misaligned it. And so he did not place the 42 tenths correctly. So that is that one. Then 
uh, Mrs. Zamir, hopefully I finished this one, wants to buy eight protractors and some erasers for her classroom. She has $30. If protractors cost $2.65 each, how much will Mrs. Zamir have left to buy erasers? So you have your $2.65 each, that's money, at times eight protractors, label everything, label everything. Multiply using the standard algorithm, regroup as needed, she'll spend $21.20 on protractors. So how much will she have left to buy erasers? Uh, you have to find the difference between what she has and what she will spend, and this is the change that's left over for erasers. So I hope this is clear and helpful for you guys. We will spend a lot of time doing the notes tomorrow before we jump into the workbook, but this can help you finish the problem set. See you soon.